What's up you guys, this is Adana, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited because it is giveaway time. Yes, that is right. I told you guys that every month this year I will be doing a giveaway. This month we're starting this giveaway out for my pre-PA students. So if you're a pre-PA student, listen up because this is for you. So in this giveaway, I will be giving away a six month subscription to Magusha's GRE prep course, along with a subscription to Rosh Reviews pre-PA anatomy boot camp. So you will be well prepared for when you get into PA school. To enter into the giveaway, you simply need to leave a comment in the comment section below telling me why you want to be a PA and where you're at in your PA journey. That's it. It's simple as that. The winner will be announced this upcoming Sunday, January 31st. So be sure to leave your comment so that you can be entered into the giveaway. For my PA students, have no fear. I have not forgotten about you. Your giveaway will be next month. We will be alternating giveaways between pre-PA students and PA students every month. So make sure that you stay tuned so you'll know exactly when the next giveaway is. All right, let's get back to our regularly scheduled video. What's up you guys? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm very like always very smiley and stuff, but this is a serious topic. So we're going to be talking about burnout today. And I don't know if you all know about burnout or what burnout is, but we're going to define that and we're going to talk about physician assistant burnout versus physician burnout um, and just kind of talking about what that looks like in this video. So let's get into it right now. Doing my dance. I'm doing my dance. Don't mind me. I'm doing my dance. All right, you guys. Video for you guys. So I had a question that was posed to me by one of you all. Again, really, really glad that uh, you guys are leaving me these comments with these questions because they are great questions. And so this one was from Eddie Whelan or Whelan, hopefully you pronounced that right. It said, hi, we always hear that physicians have a high burnout rate. Do you feel this is the same for PAs? If so, do you have any tips for avoiding that? And so, I mean, I think that this is a great, great question, Eddie, um, because yeah, I mean, that is very high on, you know, like the radar for physicians, um, the burnout rate and how like exhausted and tired they get with respect to their profession and their job and job satisfaction. And so um, for those of you who don't know what burnout is, I want to just kind of define that for you all. And then we can delve into um, what burnout looks like for PAs and then kind of like some some of the statistics behind that, as well as just doing a quick comparison of the burnout from last year. Obviously, this is um, 2020 kind of statistics of what burnout looks like for physicians, okay? So burnout is a reaction to prolonged or chronic job stress, and is characterized by three main dimensions, exhaustion, cynicism, and feelings of reduced professional ability. Um, and in under cynicism, it says less identif identification with the job. And so like, obviously, you know, you're a PA or you're a physician, like, you know, <laughs> like it is exhausting. Like I'm telling you, you guys, like when I come home after a 24 hour shift, um, if it was a, you know, a bad shift, like I am exhausted. I am tired. I always sleep for no less than four hours. Like it doesn't matter what time I go to bed. So if I came home, I got home at 10. And if I don't go and take a nap until two, I will not wake up until six like it without fail. Um, it's always at minimum four hours because I'm just so exhausted and you're just really tired. And you know, you don't always talk about that. Um, I've tried to address it on Instagram. So if you haven't already followed me on Instagram, go to down the PA and do that. But I talk about, you know, the fact that I'm tired just because being post call, you're on call for 24 hours, you're dealing with various different things, you're fielding calls from your nurses or you know, traumas are coming in, whatever the case may be, like it's tough. And so that exhaustion is no joke. Um, cynicism, you get a lot of that too. I mean, you get a lot of that in any healthcare specialty, um, but you'll have like some of these older PAs that are like serious cynics about like the profession and, you know, the job as a whole and, you know, your bosses and various different things like that. And you're like, why, what is going on? And that's because they are experiencing burnout. Um, and then just the feeling of reduced professional ability. Like what am I able to do right now? You know, like I, like I can't even give my all to this. And so that is what burnout is as a whole. 
Now, um, the question was asked, like, do I feel that um, it's the same for PAs? Now, by no means do I feel it's the same for PAs. I absolutely believe that PAs experience burnout because they do. Most people in healthcare experience burnout. And it's especially now because of COVID last year, um, you know, and like the rise of coronavirus, there are a lot of people feeling burnout. A lot of people were like really exhausted, just working long hours and dealing with these really, really intensely sick patients. Um, that and and then also like seeing, you know, some of them die after you have literally done all that you can do. Like there's nothing else for you to do. You don't know what else to do. All this hard work kind of goes down the drain because you lose, um, you know, this life that was like under your care. And so that will make a cynic out of anybody. Um, but yes, I, I do feel that a lot of uh, healthcare professionals and PAs in general um, experience burnout. Is it the same as physician burnout? I don't think so. I mean, our responsibilities are different. Um, you know, what we have to deal with is different. And at the end of the day, I can leave the job that I don't like um, and go find another specialty that I might like, um, or go find another job that I'm more interested in, or that another job that is a little bit more, um, up to my speed at that moment in time in my life where maybe I want to work like just PRN or part-time, or, you know, maybe I want to go and, you know, try another specialty that is not as like intense, um, and as stressful. And, you know, I don't think, I like, physicians don't have that luxury. Like, yeah, they can leave their job, but it's not as easy for them to now, like, they can't go to another specialty. That's not something that is um, in their purview to do. And so, no, I don't feel like it's the same because um, the, the coping mechanisms that I have as a PA to, um, you know, address my burnout is, like, a little bit more or completely different than that of a physician. So... And that is my first answer to your question. I did want to touch on this. Um, I had this thing that was pulled up uh, that it says, it's talking about um, just PA burnout in general, okay? So it says, according to the American Academy of Physician Assistants, the average burnout rate for physician assistants in the United States is 32.6% of practicing um, professionals. And so I just want to go, like, let's compare that to... Um, I mean, I'm looking at Medscape. I think they're fairly uh, okay. But it says this year, again, this was 2020 last year. It says 42% of physicians reported that they are burnt out, down from 46% five years ago, which is actually pretty good. Um, but you can see that's still like over a 10% difference. So, and that's a lot of practicing professionals. Um, so let me turn this back up so you guys can see that my phone is dying. So hopefully we'll get through this, you guys. But it says 32.6% of practicing professionals. Now, emergency medicine physician assistants have the highest percentage of fulfillment um, at 72.3% and the highest percentage of burnout at 34.5%, which makes sense because they're seeing a lot. They're dealing with a lot and they're seeing a lot of things. It says of all the specialties, pediatric subspecialties have the lowest rate of burnout at 20.2%, followed closely by primary care, internal medicine, and surgical subspecialties. That's where I land. It says, interestingly enough, women experience greater stress and ultimately greater burnout. Um, so, I, and I just want to touch on that aspect of things in a minute, but I, I want to go to the, the physician aspect of it. And it says, specialties that have been among the top in burnout over the five, past five years include critical care, makes sense, very intense, emergency medicine, again, makes sense, high acuity, you're dealing with um, lots of life and death situations. And then it says family medicine, internal medicine, neurology, and urology, okay? And so I just wanted to kind of touch on that um, for all of you guys. But uh, let's talk about the, the part where I talked about women having um, a higher rate of burnout. Now, for me, obviously, like there's some things to look into that, right? So first and foremost, the PA profession is highly like women driven. Um, the amount of female 
PAs versus male PAs is like astounding, okay? Like in my class, there were like maybe six guys out of the 30 students, okay? So if you're just kind of looking at what that may be, that's like a five to one ratio. And it's I think it's typically around there like four to one. Um, so that is, it's of course, we're gonna have a greater burnout rate. But at the same time, something that you have to keep in mind as well is the gender disparities that are just prevalent in our, our you know, economy and in our world. And so as a female in the medical field, um, typically you will get offered less money. Um, you have a lot more that you have to deal with because you're like, you know, either you're looking at like, hey, do I, want to start a family if I, if you don't have a family, like, how's that going to work with my job? Am I going to get fired or not? Um, if you do have a family, you're like, well, you know, what can I do? You know, how can I spend time with my family? And so there are a lot more things that are revolving around you that you're concerned about with respect to increasing the stress in your life than your male counterparts that have their wives or their girlfriends to kind of accommodate for those questions that you would typically have. And so those are some of the things that you want to think about. And then the pay disparity as well. I said, like, you typically get paid less. You're going to get offered less. Um, just because you're a woman, which, I mean, you're doing the exact same thing, uh, but because of your gender, you get paid less. And so those are things to look out for. And those are reasons why I would absolutely say that some of that is true in terms of why females have a higher burnout rate. But again, just to answer your question on how does that work with respect to like the physician or the PA? Do I think it's the same? No, I don't think it's the same. Now for your second part of the question, which you're talking about like some coping mechanisms, Absolutely, I think that it's important to take your vacations, take your allotted vacations and time off. You want to be able to be like step away from the profession or step away from the environment and like unplug, okay, you guys, from those things that cause you stress. Um, I like, I'm very much, a, oh my gosh, like, oh, it's no skin off my back, like, it's gonna roll. Like, there are some things that kind of irritate me, but then. I'm like, okay, well, I'm only here for like eight more hours or I'm only here for 12 more hours, you know, and then I get to decompress for two or three days. And so that is how it is with me and the current schedule that I have. For you, a coping mechanism that you can also do is making sure that your schedule fits something where you have built in time to decompress and spend with family. So there are various different models that you can work with, 312s, 410s, um, you know, you don't always have to work um, eight fives. You can do 324s in a 14 day period as I do, um, or you can do 424s in a 14 day period. However you wanna structure that, you find those jobs that will give you that built in time. Um, also. I suggest that you go and you like seek help, you know, like if you are feeling burnt out, you know, talk to someone about it, go to a therapist and talk to someone because it's okay. It's okay to speak about, you know, the various different stresses in your life. So absolutely engage in that um, because it is essential to make sure that you are not only healthy um, via your like work life, but your spiritual life and your mental life, right? Your mental health should be strong as well. Um, but those are a few things that I definitely think that you should do. And then just kind of in a sense I'm um, also like just working out like conflict like having good conflict resolutions because a lot of the times burnout comes because maybe you know on top of being exhausted like you're dealing with other stressors on the job and you cannot effectively have like a good conflict resolution and so you allow that to really like build up inside of you and then it just kind of irks you even more and then you become cynical and then it's just like okay it's just like a downward slope so if you're able to kind of touch on those things and know and realize all right what are your trigger points and you remove yourself from those positions that trigger you or you have a good way of doing some conflict resolution, then I think that that will be beneficial in helping reducing the burnout. And then uh, last but not least, you know, you can always find another job. As a PA, you can go and find another specialty, another job, um, you know, plan your, have your exit strategy, 
plan that and know exactly where you want to go and, and what you want to be, um, you know, in terms of like the person that you want to be on the job uh, and what job will allow you to do that. Okay. So hopefully this answered your question. Thank you so much for asking. It was a great question. Um, and, you know, to be honest, I think it's something that we're all going to either deal with or have dealt with um, at some point in our career. So definitely, definitely good question. Please continue to leave your comments in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions um, about how to relieve uh, stress or reduce burnout, leave that in the comment section below as well. Like this video, follow me on Instagram at Adon the PA, and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.